Hey guys, welcome to The Vault. We're back with some more exciting content. Uh, Leon and Pierre here. We're joined by our good friends Vivian and Ivan from Locker Room and Downey. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Pierre, take it away. Listen, two of my favorite people in the hat world. Now, let me tell you something. Like, I, I will be, I want to be honest, right? Like, my visits to the Locker Room of Downey have always been amongst my favorite visits in the hat world. So, you go in, I mean, you're treated like gold. It's just an amazing experience every time. As a matter of fact, when I uh, opened Topper Store USA, one of the stores I used as a model in terms of how I felt when I walked in the store, well, how I want people to feel walking into our store, was what I felt um, when I would go into the locker room of Downey. So um, every time I went in there, and it wasn't just me. It's like you watch them, the way they interact with every customer is just amazing. I think it's um, it's it's definitely one of my favorite hat stores out there, um, and, it's, and it's ran by two of my favorite people out there. So I want to get that out of the way first. Now – I'm a huge Red Sox fan. The only time I really hated LA was when the Red Sox were playing them, um, and we won. So you know, I, I I think I think that was um that was uh that was one of my favorite moments in sports. But I want to tell you something, man. My National League team, for those that don't know, I'm a Red Sox fan, but my National League team has always been the Dodgers. And Leon knows this about me. I've always loved following the Dodgers. They have a great history. They have I love the 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 cleanliness of their logos and all the things that they've done and. 1981 was a huge year. I was four years old. So I only know of it as I got older. Mm -hmm. But 1981 was an amazing year, um, not only for the Dodgers, but for me, 10 years later, understanding that the Dodgers beat the hated Yankees, it just makes it that much more important. Now, I also love hats that connect to the game of baseball. So, you know, every now and then it's cool to see a hat that's hooked to a hip hop album or whatever. But what we're here for is baseball. That's what these hats are. They're baseball hats. Mm -hmm. And what I love most about what we're about to talk about is not only how focused it is. This is a this is 16 hats we're going to end up showing you. Super focused. But at the same time, even though it's so focused, it goes off into so many different directions that everyone will find a hat that they like in this pack. Multiple. Because it's focused but also diverse at the same time, which is which is a hard thing to do. Um, especially when you're focusing on one player, one specific sort of time frame, and you, you're able to create 16 gems, in my opinion. So what I want to do is I want to allow you guys a chance to kind of share with me a little bit around what went into this, because I'm going to tell you, you guys are going to be impressed when you see all these are crazy. I had, when I opened the box, I was like, holy shit. I'm like, so I saw, I had already seen six of them, but I didn't see the other um the the other 10 and once i did i was like oh my god this is even better than i thought i'm oh, good i'm glad you guys ready to talk about it let's do yeah. it All right, let's do it you know we we 1981 was a really important year it was uh the year that fernando um he won the the, the cy young award first time a, a rookie won cy young award he was rookie of the year won the world series and something that you know was really important for us was to, you know, the Dodgers finally, you know, realized that they needed to honor and respect him. I think all the players had, that's why nobody had been wearing that number 34. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Dodgers said, you know what, we're going to retire his number. And as soon as we heard that, we thought, you know, we've, we've got to uh, do something that's really pays um, honor. respect, honor, homage to, to Fernando. He means a lot. I remember, I'm a little bit older, but I remember staying up late uh, with the, with my family in front of the TV. And, and sometimes I, I don't know if my recollection is right or wrong, but I remember staying up till what felt like midnight watching some of those games. And uh, it was just special for me in terms of our family. Um, and then as I, we grew older, we realized, wow, what an impact he had on the Dodgers themselves. And then also on the, you know, Latino community, because mm. I, I don't know, I don't know how many people really know, um, but Chavez Ravine was was uh, you know one of the communities where there was a high concentration of Latinos, Mexican Americans living there, and mm. then you know it was going to be turned into affordable housing that fell through, and then O'Malley came in and you know what you know purchased the the land, and they through eminent domain relocated or forced out a lot of the people that were still living there, and so when the Dodgers finally you know opened up their stadium in 1962, um, it was just like you know, not a lot of support from the Latino community for the Dodgers. And so O'Malley being a smart business guy was like, 
you know, maybe maybe there's a way for us to bring in uh, like a Mexican Sandy Koufax or something like that, you know, and and um, the scout, uh, famous scout Brito, he went out and he wasn't even looking for a pitcher. He was looking for a shortstop mm. and stumbled upon Valenzuela, stumbled upon him and was impressed. And so they made a deal. They brought him back. And the fact that he had I think he had eight uh, his he had a consecutive eight game winning streak. Mm. And that was like everybody was just getting excited about it. And and all Latinos, I think there was a quote from somebody who said whether people, whether Latinos knew whether, you know, baseball was square or round, they were coming to support. And he he was just that impactful and really brought back. And today you see you go to Dodger Stadium any game and you'll see that support is still there. Everybody loves him. The poor man can't go anywhere without being mobbed. <laughs> uh, you know, the crazy thing about it, I think. When Valenzuela, when this was going on, Valenzuela had no idea the impact that, that he had on the community, on the world of baseball. He, he, he was just pitching because that was his dream to, you know, to be a, a big league pitch, pitcher. But, I mean, you, 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 it's not until later on that we realize, you know, until we, until we understand the history. Like for me personally, as to how, how impactful this man was mm-hmm. to the Dodgers, you know, to baseball. Is he one of the greats? Probably not, because he doesn't have the stats or, 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 or the, uh, you know. But is he a great? Yeah, he's a great. He's a Dodger great. So when, when we found out, like Vivian said, when we found out that he was going to be, his number was going to be retired, I said, let's do something where we can we can tell a story. We can we can we can tell a story. We can honor him in a way that, that we can. And in a big, impactful way. Like we thought this merited more than just two, three hats. We really thought. We really had a vision for something that was going to expand over two weekends to really kind of celebrate um, what was going to be happening this coming weekend. You know, it's something that you said, Pierre. Um, I think what I wanted to do is, I think we created that. We allowed for fans, or we're going to allow for fans to come into the store who are already coming in. We've already seen a wave of fans who are coming in, shopping, getting ready for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And they're coming in, and they want to pick up a they want to pick up their jersey, they want to pick up a shirt, and they're able to pick up a hat, and they're going to be able to pick up a hat from this last weekend and from this weekend that, that that's coming. They're going to be able to because I've been in the store the whole week, and I've been seeing that. I've been seeing people get excited. Like I want to see that hat that you guys displayed because the people that are picking it up are not the kids or or, or the or the. Or nah, the these are hype hats, man. These are these are hats for people that appreciate the game of baseball. And, you know, and I think like the Mexican community that's in in the area of your store impressed me when I was there because I remember when you guys were putting out Mexico World Baseball Classic hats. And as you were putting them out, there was like slews of of Mexican Mexican locals buying these up. So like it's like, you know, listen, when I think about it, I just think about I think about the baseball player, but I think about like the young Mexicans that watched Fernando Valenzuela play and probably he inspired to, to play the game of baseball. I think the impact goes beyond the game, right? You have some people that are just baseball players and you have people that are more than baseball players. And I think uh, Fernando Valenzuela is one of those guys. And, you know, I was looking at some stuff about Fernando, like he's the only guy to ever win the rookie of the year and the Cy Young in the same year. That, that's right. the only time that's ever happened. Um, he won his first eight starts, like you talked about. Five of them were shutouts, which is unheard of nowadays. Um, the guy was also not bad with the bat. He won a Silver Slugger That's Award right. at pitcher yeah. twice. Um, this guy is not like – this guy is no slouch. This is a baseball player. Right. But it's a, he's a guy that transcended the game of baseball and did huge things for the Mexican community and meant a lot to the city of Los Angeles. Um, you know, I think it's impressive, too. I think, like you said, he wasn't one of the greats, but he had a great – um, he had a great six-year, seven-year stretch, right? A six-year stretch where he, he was an he was an all-star for six consecutive seasons. I mean, this is no, this isn't. This is a guy that probably had a shorter sort of dominant period, but still, so did Sandy Koufax. <laughs> like you know, mm-hmm. I think some people forget Sandy Koufax was <clears throat> very short. I mean, albeit dominant, but he was a very short sort of sort of um, run there. Mm-hmm. But um, listen. Uh, I think I think this is is super impressive. Um, I know you guys put a lot of heart and soul into this. So, what, without further ado, why don't we go through these hats and you guys can kind of talk through them? So, the first set that we dropped last Friday, uh, we really wanted kind of you know pay tribute to his roots, uh, 
It has a Mexican flag up in the front, which you know you don't really see very often. Um, and then we also wanted to include, you know, of course, the number 34 is being retired. So you have the 81, and you'll see just the Batterman has a little bit of the Mexico flag colors. I like that. I like that little touch right there. And then it's you have it in the back as well. Um, so you have the 81, and then you have the bicentennial patch, which, of course, the Dodgers all wore in 1981 to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the city of L.A. So we wanted to basically highlight those two significant um, components that made up the 1981 season. Not nah, beautiful. And then we wanted to do something, um, you know, again, Saturday we dropped these. And this is, uh, you know, the Mexico flag colors right in the L.A. and in the patches themselves. So you'll see the bicentennial patch there with red and green. And you'll see the 81 patch here also with red, white, and green. Listen, man, I love these, man. I'm telling you, man, I love them. That's a good one. Yeah. And, and the customers did, too. You know, yeah. we, we, we ordered, we ordered a, 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 a big amount knowing yeah. that people are going to come buy them now and people are going to still want them. Later on. Later on. You did the right thing, man. This wasn't about selling out. This is about providing something to your customer base that they would appreciate mm -hmm. because it was such a, it's such a huge moment for the city of L.A. And the only thing different about this one, of course, is instead of the Batterman, we put the Mexico flag in the back. So yeah. some people like it in the back. We thought being in the front was a little bit different than original for, for the first batch. Here we put it in the back to be a little bit more subtle. And we did the royal and the uh, two-tone gray. No, we came, with, we came with the gray one just to change it up a bit. We felt that the overall pack should include mostly blue because we're talking about the Dodgers. Uh, the gray matches the jersey. So we thought, you know, we this don't – This feels like a jersey hook. If you kind of look at the, the jersey I'm wearing right now. Yeah. 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 That's, what, that's, what the, that's what the intention was of that, you know. Uh, yeah. And then on all of them, we put the 34 clip so that uh, – you could highlight the, the number, you know, remembering that he's, his number is now retired. So uh, on that one, we put the pin of El Toro, which is his nickname, the bull. Yeah, so these are the ones that have already released, just so yes. everyone can get another look at the clip. Mm -hmm. Those this came out Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this of this past, past weekend. weekend. Mm -hmm. Now we move into the stuff that hasn't come out yet. So we're going to start with what's coming out Friday. Friday. That is what we call our OG collection. So I like this one. So this is like a, a reminiscent of what Fernando wore. He didn't have a, a batter man in the back. If you look at any pictures in 81, mm -hmm. there was no new era flag at the time. So we kept it tonal. Um, and then, you know, as a nod to him, we, we put that bull pin on there with, along with our locker room pin. And of course, the green under. Yeah. Green. So that's what we call our OG. This will be the OG collection. This is a classic, man. Come on, you can't go wrong with that. Come on. And then we thought that um, if today the Dodgers were playing, you'd see it a World Series patch in the World Series today. So we mm -hmm. thought, let's put the 81 on there, on the OG, no batter mine on the back, keep, keeping it a green under, tonal new era flag. You're, you're, you're missing the most important detail. Hmm. Whoa. Yes. Yes. The OG, absolutely. The OG wool, wool, which I, as soon as I picked up the hat, I'm like, I love it. Wool. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm, I'm wearing it right now. And I was like, man, automatically feels different. You know, I've been wearing hats since, since 1990. <laughs> uh, and the, 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 the feel, the difference of the wool. And, and the these kids don't know. These kids don't know about <laughs> wool, man. Wool is the shit, man. Like, I mean, <laughs> I still like there's something about the way wool, even when it gets hot, it has this unique smell to it, but it's iconic to me. It's like it feels different. Yeah. It feels yeah. different. This is the third of the OG pack. This is the one that's gonna have all those same details, no batter man, green under, wool. But this one we have the bicentennial patch, much like the other packs that you've done. And on these three, we uh, or on these these three, we kept the 34 um clip in gold, gold just as an honor to just you know, to kind of yeah. highlight the gold the significance the importance you know of that number 34 i think beautiful yeah. and again we we wanted to you know also put the bicentennial patch just so people could know that it's the bicentennial you know and, and the significance of the city of la that, that year celebrating 200 years can i just say my little pet peeve when people come in and ask for the el toro patch 
And I'm like, it's a City of LA Bicentennial patch. I know. I wasn't the only one to wear it. <laughs> I know. I, I love, I, I, you and I have talked about your disgust for that a couple of times. And I, I, I'm, with you on it. I'm with you on it. But listen, I, I, I know I've already said it a hundred times, but I, 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 I love, I love this pack. So let's go through um, the stuff that's coming out on Saturday. There's four hats coming out on Saturday, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saturday, we wanted to do two things. One, again, a hook back to the, to the away jersey. Um, and just keeping it simple. So you have the batter man, nice and clean in the back, flat, uh, green under, of course, and you know the 81 patch with some pins and clips there for the. And this one, yeah. different than our, our first gray one that we released, has no Mexico, no Mexico colors, no Mexico mm -hmm. flag. Just so a pure just, dodger. Just for, the, for the for the fan who who doesn't want to rep Mexico or who's not Mexican, you know, but wants to be part of this and and, and feels part of it because they should. You know, he, yeah. he not only you're a Dodger fan, you're a Fernando, Fernando fan. fan. Now, I'm wearing the Mexican shit, man. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You got to go all in, right? So same thing here. Just clean bison tailing patch, the 34 clip, El Toro. Nice flat batter man on the back with the green under. Damn. Clean. Love this, man. It, let me tell you something. This is probably one of my favorite packs of the – not even the year, the past couple of years. I just like – this is like this is like you know this is the roots, man. This is like yeah. it's like a time capsule. Nah, you you know sometimes you get like sucked into all this other stuff, right? But mm. then you get back to like what it's all about, and this is what it's all about, man. Yeah. Okay. Here on Saturday, we want to just kind of as a capstone bring it back to the Mexican American roots. You know these red and green, uh, green and red colors on the hat itself and on the batter man in the back. Nice clean gray under, and just you know just highlight. Uh, you know, these are kind of like the World Baseball Classic Mexico colors too. So just kind of just a nod to to the roof. Mm -hmm. I like this. I like that you went with a gray under on these two and not the green. Yeah. Consider, I think that would have been a little green overload, but mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Here's the other one. Here's the you know you saw the bicentennial patch. Now you've got this uh, World Series 1981 patch. And again, um, green and red, white colors. So. Leon, are you a, are you a fan of the 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 uh, El Toro patch or? Ah. <laughs> yeah, I, I I like it. It's no, different. Wrong answer, Leon. It's not the El Toro patch. <laughs> the Punisher <laughs> patch, the Bicentennial, two hundred years. We learned that because of that patch, though. Bicentennial. I remember we had All an right. argument about it. So that wraps up Saturday, right? Yes. Now Sunday, we go into some good stuff too. You guys ready? Yeah. So These are smooth looking, man. Let's show, let's show the blue ones first. The blue this ones? Right. Yeah. So the blue ones. Here well, again, you're going to have a bicentennial and you're going to have a 1981. Something that's more, you know, just relevant to today, just some fashion uh, incorporated in there with a blue corduroy visor and a chrome uh, crown. Mm -hmm. And then put some gold accent in the Batterman and around the LA front logo. And here we just switched it up the, you know, so you have a 34 pin and then you have um, his nickname as a clip. I love this, man. It's a good idea. Now we, you know, we hadn't seen anything done like that with a blue Dodger blue corduroy on a Dodger hat like that. So, no, man, this is, it's, it, these are good. So we said, it's this, this is the time to bring that out. And I thought, I thought, I thought it was a well, well executed. So, I, yeah. agree, I agree, Ivan. Well, thank Very you. Very well done. Thank you. <laughs> And here's the uh, 1981 version, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we go to the piece de resistance, right? <laughs> the final one. Yeah. Cherry on top. And again, this one, we wanted to do something a little bit different. So we did a chrome corduroy. Um, okay. you know, I don't know that that's been done very often. We wanted to pay uh, a little tribute to the, you know, the, the Mexican uh, heritage with the colors and the Mexico flag. And this is, you know, you've seen this flag, but you know, it is newer this year. Uh, so we wanted to do it, you know, with the, an update on the flag. Nah, it looks, this looks amazing. And then on this one, you know, just to complement the red, we did a 34 clip in blue. Just that's, you know, that's like what you would see on the back of the jersey you're wearing, Pierre. Yep. Uh, it'll look blue with the white outline. The so front will have a red and the black will have a blue. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, and and the reason we did the pins is just to keep it more up to date. You know, the pins and the clips are going on, are still going on right now, are still relevant. You wouldn't have seen them back then, but 
you know, people, even even people who are not of yeah, the people the community are loving them. You might see these back then. You still, if you go back and look yeah, at some yeah. of those retro stuff, like LA was like to me, like where pin culture developed and started, right? Like, mm -hmm. so you do if you look at some of those old videos, even at Laker games, you see some of these real fanboys just wearing like hats with a bunch of pins on them. So it, to me, it's kind of like a nod to both, you know. I think the I mm -hmm. think if anything, these clips kind of harken to this this era, but like all these pins, like it, I don't know, it fits the it fits yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so I got to ask you guys a question. So, and this is for each of you, and this includes you, Leon. If you could only wear one of these hats for the rest of your life, you had to wear one of these hats for the rest of your life. Which one would it be? I'll start with you, uh, Leon. Give me the OG eighty one no batterman blue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. How about you, uh, Ivan? I'm wearing it. Same OG. one? OG. Same no, one. No, OG, no patch, though, right? No patch. Oh. No patch. Oh, That's God. tough. It's tough because I, I I, put this one on, you know, one of the gray ones, but this one, yeah. Yeah, this, this one. is. If it's just one to pick, I, I pick this one. How about uh, how about you? Uh, wait, wait, did we go through everybody? No. We didn't ask her. Oh come on, Vivi! I got. I got <laughs> you, which one are you wearing? You know what? I would wear the the gray bicentennial patch with the Mexico mm. flag in the back. Mm, that's a good one too. Yeah, it's just like that one's smooth. Clean, clean. It's clean. All right, it's clean, simple. True Dodgers in the front, and then a little bit of, of me in the back. Which so I have picking? to. I have to pick, right? Yeah. Which one you pick it? I'm. <laughs> Listen, you don't seem like a one hat kind of guy. I'm not. I'm not. I would roll. You don't, I would, have, I don't have two. <laughs> you know, I'm going with. Listen, if I, if I had to wear one mm -hmm. for the for the rest of my um for the rest of my life, I like a little more pizzazz. Okay. Than um than Ivan, but I understand Ivan's choice. I would go with uh, the OG wool. With the bicentennial nice patch. Okay. Just because, listen, I want a little bit extra on there, right? Yeah. But, listen, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm almost – I don't want to curve any of these because I like this. Leon knows me. Like, for me, like, when I, I'm a completionist. Now that I have all these, they're going into a special bin. Yeah. You want to keep the set pristine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I do. I'm keeping the pins on them. I'm, pu I'm, 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 pu I'm taking some pictures first, and I'm going to put these away because this is one of my favorite collections – you know, listen, man. I got. I just got to say this again. I, I've I've been watching baseball my whole life, right? And then sometimes I really love hooks, and then other times I feel like it kind of bastardizes the game, and I don't like it sometimes. Yeah, I'm in this weird space now because I'm getting old and crotchety a little bit, but I still love a good hook. But I also like, you know what? I'm a baseball fan. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. tell I'm not I'm no I'm no idiot. I understand the game. I've been watching the game. I understand the history of the game. And sometimes I feel like it cheapens us sometimes when we're when we're overusing hooks. And when you get something like this, it's so refreshing mm -hmm. to talk about baseball. And I'm sure it feels good too to have people coming into your store that were around in '81 watching Fernando play and want to be a part of it, or even young people that are hearing their you know their parents or grandparents talk about Fernando Valenzuela and now they want to like. They want to be a part of it. I mean, that's kind of what this is all about. Yeah, it was right? so we had we've had so many people come in and they're talking about they're going to the game. They're going either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Some are going to two, some are going to all three. Mm -hmm. And they all talk about I'm going with my parents because it meant so much to my parents. I'm going yeah. because I grew up watching this. I'm you know, it's just it, it's been it's been really nice hearing all of these stories uh, uh from the customers about you know their excitement around the game and the retirement of his jersey. You know what? Like this, this, like as a as a as a store owner, the reason that I open my store, the reason I love to do what I do, is because because of that, because of the 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 fans and how passionate they are. Because that's what we are. Whether you know, that's how we started. We started as 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 a, a store where the fans would come and I talked to them, and you know, we we've gone through the the craziness of the the hats and the drops and the lines and all that. But now bringing it back, like you said. You said it probably best. It was refreshing for me to hear, to get back to that, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation and we're talking about a player 
or we're talking about a team and you feel the passion, you know, behind that, behind, behind what they're talking about. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm taking my family on Friday. It's important for me to be there on Friday. It's important for me to, to celebrate whether he knows me or not, you know, but to me it's important because of what, what, what he meant to my community, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think to have that, that same uh, feeling with another guy that you never met, that he's, that, you know, it's kind of have that connection. I think, I think that's what, what continues to make, make this fun for me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, putting out product, laying out product, you know, being a part of, of, of what we've created at the locker room at Downey, that to me is, is, is what makes everything and all the headaches and everything else that goes along with being <laughs> an owner, you know, Pierre, uh, mm -hmm. firsthand now, uh, <laughs> The, the trials and the tribulations and the hurdles we have to go through. Um, but that, that was, that's what, that's been fun for this, this whole week that, that I've been there. And I know it's going to be fun, you know, come starting Thursday, Friday, cause it's going to start for us. It's going to start again, you know, so that, that's, what's cool about this. You know, what's crazy, man. is like with Dodger baseball, there's two things I always think about Two like, I wouldn't say moments or series of moments. Right. So the first one is Kirk is Kirk Gibson. You know, rounding, you know, hitting that home run on his, on his, you know, that, that gimpy ass run around the bases. But the, the thing that I always connect with Dodger baseball is Fernando Valenzuela for some reason. And it's always been that way for me. Kirk Gibson, that one moment, yes. That, that's the, probably the most iconic moment. Mm -hmm. it, it, in terms of like when you're looking at the game, like if you're not an LA fan, that's what you're, that's what's drilled into your goddamn heads. Mm -hmm. Right. But for me, it's always been Fernando Valenzuela. And um, and listen, I think you guys did an, an, a tremendous job putting together a collection of 16 hats that really do, as you said at the outset, um, uh, pay homage to Fernando the right way. So I want to thank you guys for a lot of things. I want to thank you guys for running a fantastic store. I want to thank you guys for being able to play on both sides of the fence, both in the fashion space and in the, in the fan space. You guys do a great job with that. And I also want to thank you guys for being great friends. So um, with that, is there anything you guys have before we wrap up? No, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. Thank it's you for giving great. us the opportunity to share this with everybody. Uh, you know, I think it's, you know, we don't, we don't do that enough. We don't come out and explain everything and what we do, but I think this merited that. So I want to thank you and Leon, you, Pierre, for being a friend, for being, a, you know, now a colleague or, you know, uh, you know, we appreciate you and uh, we, we appreciate your, your feedback because you're, you're great at giving us feedback and you know that's what makes us grow and 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 and, and, and do things that that are relevant so I, I appreciate both of you guys for that thank you yeah, I, and i feel the same way guys and i want to thank you for joining us today i thought uh we were debating whether or not i should do this with just leon and the guys or have you on and i think the right thing was having you both on because it means so much more coming from from you than it does from us so with that i want to thank both of you for joining us this evening Leon, I want to thank you as well. Um, mm -hmm. And with that, take us away, big fella. Yeah, let us know in the comments which of these Fernando Valenzuela hats are your favorite. Make sure you guys are following the Locker Room of Downey for future release information. For uh, Leon, Pierre, Ivan, and Vivian, we're signing out, guys. Stay fitted. Thank See you, everybody. All right. Peace.